That's a good one of Kennedy. It always cracks me up because yeah. it's so much later in the paper. It's like <laughs> last week. All right. Then we're going to call this meeting to order. Hello, everybody. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Beckett. Here. Dean. Here. Gardner. Here. Leo. Here. Lewis. Here. Stanton. Here. Chester. Here. All right. Very good. Thank you. Everybody should have a copy of their packets. Um, consent agenda. I've had a chance to read through it all. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second, please. Second. All right. Motion by Dean and second by Trester. Any discussion, questions, comments on either uh, the minutes or the anything? Yeah, Madam Mayor, I had two comments. Um, good evening, everybody. On page three of the minutes, I believe the word should be receipt, not receive. Um, you get that to Jamie? Yeah, just okay. right at the end of staff reports. It should be receipt instead of receive. Uh, two is I did have some questions regarding accounts payable. I sent an email to the treasurer earlier today. I don't know if Peter's on the line. Or not to He's downstairs. Yeah. He was going to come up for the. Okay. Yeah, I can wait till he come up. He can. Okay. There's like five items that I have questions. Basic on, so. clarification. Thanks. All right. Very good. Any other questions or concerns? Well, with that, we'll call the roll, please, Madam Clerk. Second. Yes. Dean. Yes. Gardner. Yes. Leo? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Chester? Yes. All right, thank you. All right, next on to staff reports. Everybody's got their reports in the packet. The manager returns tomorrow from vacation. I believe we have Lieutenant Ensfield on the line. Brett, anything you'd like to report, sir? Nope, just a uh, nice, quiet winter uh, week this week. All right, very good. Sure. Any items for anybody who's, I see we have Scott's on the call. I think Cindy's on the call. Any questions? All right, very good. All right, thank you so much. Agenda items, as you can see, we have a few special guests in the audience. So I've plugged in our county commissioner as a special guest. And then we have two individuals who are running for state rep and we'll plug them in under public comment. Um, other than that, agenda is as is. All right, so with that, Mr. Commissioner. Just a good evening. Good seeing everybody. Um, Madam Chair, first, thank you for sending the email on reference broadband, and I did send that on. And from what my understanding is, the next two weeks, you'll be having a meeting together with all the townships that are in support of broadband. I'll just make reference to you. Today, I was at a um, Commission of Aging, I'm sorry, a Community Action Meeting. They gave me these stats, which are just important for broadband. 33% of Allegan County is living at or below property guidelines. The ability to access broadband allows clients to connect to supportive resources and services at half the time with reduced barriers. They're just saying again and again, the poor simply can't get a hold of the, the services that are there for them. And then something that I did realize is seniors are significantly impacted by a lack of internet in homes. <clears throat> Three out of five seniors do not have access to, to connect to the internet. Um, and then just lastly, the overall county health is directly impacted by the lack of broadband. I mean, what an essential thing to, to get going. So thanks for your support on it. Also, I think I mentioned to you a little bit about the judgeships that we are 110 um, felony cases behind. And the numbers that we have have supported us to get another judge and that is before the governor. You know, so we're hoping that she'll sign that. 
And just so you know that we're in the transition part of going, we need to move non-court services out of the county building so we have access for it. And just this past week, we had um, just the, I mean, all the different groups saying there's not enough room, there's not enough room. Um, so I think, I, I believe that CMH has been here with their request for funds, they're moving down right across from the hospital. So that will free up about 10,000 square feet. We plan to move the drain commissioner, the treasurer, you know, to, to that area to make the courthouse a courthouse. Uh, so we're just looking forward to that. I just also just wanted to mention to you um, in seeing the, just the sheriff's department, mm -hmm. but to think of, um, we had an annual report from the health department. I know there was many volunteers for the health department that were from this area. And um, they give a report of all the help they did in COVID, but then to think of all health for children in so many different areas, just to bring that up. And I just also bring up that the sheriff was also at our meeting, recognizing these people in case you see them, as far as Harry, um, Corey Hunt, Mike Larson, um, Carter Morris, Jacob Gage, Jason Kreidoff, just with life-saving awards. I mean, the different officers that are, again, doing what they can to help us. And then just lastly, I just bring up to you a walk for warmth. We have some of the townships that are almost competing against each other. Community Action has a walk for warmth, the links on, on March 26th from 4 to 11, just to raise money for the poor. And the numbers on that are significant as far as how they're helping them with heating bills and just with food. And it's just a real big thing. But Madam Chair, thanks for letting me speak. It's great being here. Have a good meeting. Any questions for <clears throat> Commissioner Kappinga? Thank you. It's good Thank to you. see. It's like once a month now. It's just like a trend. This is really nice. <laughs> I like this. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Uh, at this time, we'll open up uh, for public comment on any agenda item. You can come up and introduce yourself and limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, any agenda item? Anybody online? Go ahead. David Langley, David Langley for uh, Serendipity Bed and Breakfast. I'm also the uh, president of the SDABA. Um, this is about the uh, first thing on the new business, the, uh, the parade, um, special event parade, the Aaron Grove Park Parade. Um, and I was sent an email from our administrator, Alec, um, and he, he said that things may have changed some as far as the uh, ability to have the parade and they were gonna have a vote against the fort tonight. And I, I hope that's the case. Um, I, what, what, I, what I would like to say is I, I don't want to, to get involved with having the city council and the fire department be, be kind of at each other's whatever's, you know, cause I, cause I thought it was a problem with the, with the physical setup of the barriers and stuff. And um, I just want to make sure that 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 is that that will be that will not be a problem um, if you if you vote for it tonight, because um, and having the fire department on in everybody's good graces is 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 very important. So and I know Greg is very he's a real stickler about that, and I don't want to I don't want the uh, uh, SDABA or the city council to be to be in a situation of doing things that are that the fire department doesn't believe is is proper so in any case you know what you're doing i just wanted to just mention that that i'm aware of All it right. too so okay thanks that's and, it uh i know annie and kevin had i'd ask that you uh, make your comments at this time if you'd like so please feel free either one of you and then i know dan's ready Good evening, I'm Annie Brown, and I am running for state representative in the 38th district. My husband and I have lived in South Haven for decades, and that's where we raised our three kids. I'm a former teacher, and my husband and I owned a small business for 20 years. I also worked for Senator Carl Levin. And most recently, I worked for Senator Gary Peters for the last three years as his West Michigan Regional Coordinator. So I know this part of the mitten like the back of my hand. My priorities are the damage that's being done by high water levels and the constant storms that we have. 
I was a Girl Scout for 10 years. So a Girl Scout is always prepared. And I think that we really need to have the funding for small towns to be ready for more damage and try to prevent that and give municipalities what they need. Because I think oftentimes small towns along the shoreline have been pushed onto a back burner by Lansing. And when I'm your state representative, I'll make sure that I show up. Other priorities of mine are affordable housing. Like you, I live in a tourist town and we need affordable housing for the employees who are working in the summer and for our teachers and our police officers and our plumbers who live here year round. And finally, I am very passionate about expanding mental health care. So now that we've lived through COVID, probably most of us know somebody who has suffered from depression and anxiety. And we need to make sure that our friends and family who, are, who need mental health care are getting the care that they need close to home. So once again, I just wanna say that I'm running because I wanna make sure that families in our small towns on the shoreline have a voice in Lansing, a seat at the table, and a state rep who shows up. Thank you. Thanks, Annie. Kevin? Let's go back them up one after the other. Hi there. Um, I've been in this room a few times because I was part of the STABA mm -hmm. when it was coming here. Um, my name is Kevin Whiteford, and I am running for the state rep, 38th District also. Um, that 38th district right now uh, with the new lines represents the northern part of Saugatuck Township all the way down to the Indiana border. Um, right now, I have 15 family members in the South Haven area. Um, a number of them are in our businesses. Our main business, uh, two main businesses, one of them is a real estate business. We own uh, numerous types of properties. Um, and then the second one is an investment business. Um, <clears throat> fortunately, I've been very blessed. I've got um, all three kids in the business in some way or fashion. Um, so I wanted to tell you about two things. Uh, one thing is, uh, I'm not sure if you know the history of me, but I grew up in a very small house, uh, five kids, uh, a mother and father in a three bedroom house. And my dad was a bricklayer, he was a hard worker. And uh, I got that from him. Um, but some of the things that I got from that situation is he worked most of the time and therefore he wasn't home. I was, I am a product of a village raised as a child. And I've been an advocate for that kind of stuff forever. And what do I mean by that? Well, fortunately for me, I got an opportunity to play for one of the best college basketball teams in the nation, division one. And when I was there one day, I was sitting in there as a freshman and next to me was a guy. And I said, you know, why don't you go to class? And he goes, you know what, Kev, I don't know how to read. I learned real quick that more than half the guys on that team couldn't read and write. You know, <clears throat> I've been an educational advocate forever because of that. Now, of course, I went to the coaches and said, hey, we gotta teach these kids how to read and write. That's a long story. But what I'm getting at is two of my main premises is one, education. We've gotta educate our kids. And I want a future for my family, um, not only my kids, but my grandkids here, not in, not only the Lakeshore, but all of the state of Michigan. And so I will make sure that that happens. Um, <clears throat> hopefully they have a future that is more promising than what I've got. Um, number two, I'm a huge advocate for small businesses. I think small businesses is the advocate for every community. Um, you know, from the hot dog stand all the way up to whatever's going on. And you know, one of the cool things, honestly, and I'm not just blowing smoke and I never do, but I'm in your town quite often. I mean, you've got great restaurants. And they, they thrive and they do really well here. Scooter's Pizza, The Butler, you know, those kinds of places are great places to just run by and get some good food. Um, <clears throat> but those companies and those businesses need to survive and we need to figure out how to make that happen. And so I will be all about that. So my name again is Kevin Whiteford. I'm from South Haven um, and I will do my best to do what is right for not only this community, but the state of Michigan. And I'm running for the 38th district. Uh, State House. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Dan? I'm Dan Fox. I'm not running. 
Uh, this is just the, the regular and very short uh, report uh, for the fire district board meeting, uh, which was a week ago today. And just, I think three items that I've highlighted here. Um, in that meeting, we went through the fire district's legal counsel invoice breakdown. And I know you guys deal with a miserably high legal bill, fire district annual bill was $81,000, which we consider horribly high, uh, but apparently inevitable. Um, as you all have seen, we also approved this report on parade security, which was sent to you individually. Uh, and that was in the meeting, Brenda Marcy from the township, uh, one of our rare visitors, although I think you were, you said you were on the, on the I watched the or recording. you watched it on YouTube mm -hmm. or whatever. But Brenda was there and commented favorably. And then uh, we also approved, uh, I think it was a roughly $5,000 funding request for a building plan study aimed around at minimum adding potentially dormitory space probably to the north side of the fire district building, um, which relates to the way we have to house our people and staff the department with a lot of people who are there for 48 hour periods of time and so on and so forth. So that's, that's being looked at. Um, we are looking at other aspects of what these are down the road kind of building projects for the district. So I think that's it pretty much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Here with us. Oh, anybody online, Jamie? All right, very good. We have no introduction of ordinance and no public hearings and no unfinished business. So we'll move on to new business. Uh, just a reminder for folks who are with us, uh, we generally have our workshops on Wednesday and we take quite a bit of time to uh, work our way through these items. Um, so if it seems at times that we move a bit quick on this tonight, it's because we had quite a bit of discussion about it on Wednesday. Uh, so with that, up first is our special event request for Sadaba's Aaron Gobark St. Patrick's Day Parade special event request. Uh, anything to add, Kate? Um, no, pretty straightforward. Um, I will say that uh, um, in talking with Lieutenant Brett Ensfield, there are going to be two reserves um, Saturday and then the regular on-duty officer. Um, so if, if uh, they need to assist with the parade, they will be willing to do so. so. All right, very good. Go ahead, Holly. Mayor, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve this special event request for Sadaba's Aaron Gobark St. Patrick's Day Parade on Saturday, March 12th. Thank you. Second. Okay, I got a motion from Leo and a second from Stanton. Any discussion? Madam Mayor, just wanted to say it's really nice to have these parades back. Like we had the Whoville Parade in Chris at Christmas time um, after the pandemic, um, and not having some of these parades. It's nice to have some of these community events back in town. Very good. All right. Any other discussion? Yeah, Madam Mayor. Yep. Um, just it, it, it would be remiss if we didn't mention that the uh, Township Fire Department did not sign off on this. Mm -hmm. They did not approve it. Uh, for very specific reasons um just i think that just needs to be noted yep. so so noted yep yeah, and i think with uh the parade um it's less than two weeks away i think we can work through those things mm -hmm. yeah agree and um just to confirm we are in receipt of a communication from the chief saying if asked he will supply three to five vehicles and drivers to assist Correct. assist with barricades yeah yes okay all right very good Anything else? This is a voice vote. All in favor, please say yes. 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 Anybody opposed? Nope. All right, passes. Very good. Parade. All right. Next item is the signage request for the SCA Mountain Town on tour. Okay. Um, no, just like we mentioned at the workshop, this has been done before. Um, it's pretty routine, uh, usually a yearly request. All right, very good. Pretty straightforward. Ken? Sure, I'll move to approve the signage request from the SCA to place a banner under the socket of the pallet sign to advertise the 
Mountain Film on Tour. Oh, second. Second. All right. Leo. Motion by Trester and second by Leo. Any questions, concerns, comments? If not, this is a voice vote. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Yes. aye. Opposed. All right, very good. All right, next item we have Peter. We might as well just have him come up to the podium. Um, <laughs> And don't let us forget, Russ had a couple questions for you with the budget. I think he prepped you on it. So we'll let you take us through these okay. requests first. So the first one is for the EMC pickup truck. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we talked about this on Wednesday. I don't know if anybody has any more questions. Nothing's really changed on it. All this is not guaranteeing us a truck. It's just right now the economy is just putting us in line, and they could say we don't have anything for you. Then we can go back to the drawing board. Yeah. All right. And coming out of next year's budget, twenty-two twenty-three. Yes, that's right. It's coming out of the twenty-two twenty-three budget. So a year from now, usually this is something we do in July, but it's that fast track. All right. So I don't know if anybody has any questions on first vehicle. Well, let's go ahead and get a motion in a second. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve resolution number 220228 as presented and purchased a 2023 GMC Sierra 3500 HD regular cab 4x4 pickup truck with a Tommy gate in the amount not to exceed $42,000 through the competitively bid state of Michigan, my deal program. All right, very good. Second. All right, motion by Gardner and a second by Stanton. Any other questions or concerns for Peter in that regard? Uh, if not, this is a roll call vote. Madam Clerk. Second. Yes. Dean. Yes. Gardner. Yes. Leo. Yes. Lewis. Yes. Stanton. Yes. Chester. Yes. All right. So the second resolution is for a replacing the 2009 international dump truck and it will be a 2023 international with all the belly blades, the box, the flashing lights, everything that the DPW director spec'd out. And that one will be paid out of the 22-23 budget or pushed farther back because the truck is a year away for, for delivery. And then it's another nine months after that. So that truck would not go into service into probably January, 2024 the price for the truck and all the equipment to the my deal is $170,000 there. So I don't know if anybody has any questions since Wednesday that arrived. And I believe Scott is online. If you have any direct questions for Scott Herbert. Go ahead, Russ. Yes. Uh, thank you. Hi, Scott. Russ. Hey, uh, tell us a little bit about what uh, what you're going to be getting with this uh, new snowplow. Um, there's, I, I'm sure this is pretty exciting for you to get something new and Tell us a, a little bit about what this truck might be able to do for you that you can't do today. Yeah, sure. Uh, more importantly um, than what it can do for us, it's what it can do for the community. And we can, um, this purchase ensures that we can provide reliable snowplow service for the next 10 to 15 years, uh, as long as we do our part and maintain the piece of equipment correctly. Um, it is always nice to get a new piece of equipment. Uh, it's nicer for us, more reliable fewer issues. And fortunately, uh, if we if we went ahead and approved this, um, it would rotate out our 2009, which is seen really harsh municipal use for was that thir 13 years. Um, so a lot of stop and go a lot of salt exposure. So this is um, this is really good for uh, for the staff as well as the community. Uh, a couple keynote features that might be a little bit different is um, we we we're getting a new front snowplow along with it hopefully and the ones that we have are very very old and the new one is i think it's going to allow us to get a little bit closer to objects like cars mailboxes etc um, and then another key upgrade for us is we're the 2009 has a 10 foot underblade where this one will have a 12 foot so I, I hope that we can get the streets plowed a little bit quicker, hopefully shave a little bit of time off of that job, which, um, which will end up saving money in the long run on fuel costs and labor. Um, so yeah, also with new equipment comes, a lot of the stuff has more eco-friendly equipment on it. So this truck will be spec'd out with DEF fluid, so reduced carbon emissions, which is nice. Thanks. That's great. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. All right, I'll entertain a motion, please. Motion to 
Mayor. Yes, go on ahead. Motion to approve resolution number 220228-B, purchasing a 2023 International HB607 chassis <clears throat> augmented with specialized equipment in the amount of 170,144 and 21 cents. Good. Second. All right, motion by Leo and second by Gardner. Any other questions? Well, just, just a comment, Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, Scott, I think we should um, follow the lead of um, the Michigan Department of Transportation and consider naming the snowplow when we, when we receive it. <laughs> so, I think you've got a couple. I think you've got a couple of years, unfortunately, to think about uh, how you want to name it, or or, may, or maybe we'll ask the uh, the school kids for yes, some ideas on, on a name for our, for our new snowplow. <laughs> there is one that the uh, city manager Heist came up with that I really like, which is no eye contact. We kind of have an unwritten rule in the business that. You know, if anyone's out shoveling their driveway, um, don't don't look at them directly. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that, that that explains why you're always blowing me off when you come by and make, and make, make a mess of my driveway. I try to look so angry when I'm plowing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Any other comments or questions? If not, this is a roll call. Madam Clerk. Second. Yes. Please. Yes. Gardner. Yes. Yes. Lewis. Yes. Sandy. Yes. Presser. Yes. All right. Last one, Peter. So the third resolution is for replacing. We have a salt spreader that goes back in the large dump truck, and the one that we'll replace has been here since 2012. But we might scotch once we these things are also a year away. Mm -hmm. So once we receive the snow, the new salt spreader that would go, Scott still debating either to keep the one that we currently have or clean it up and put it out there. For some recoup on the cost and then also we want to scott just talked about the new front the big front plow when we get the heavy snows and it's got a cutout so you can get closer to the curbs and mailboxes so that's something they've designed the one we're replacing everybody remembers bruce simon's been here since 65 he's still those two plows were here when he got here so mm -hmm. the one with, i think with jack bears got their use out of it so yeah so that's is what and then the prices on these two there was it was about the same money. One went up and one went down because they gave us the quote on the snow plow that was cut out, notched out from the mailbox. So some of these dollar amounts changed by a few hundred dollars from the Wednesday's workshop or otherwise. And this will be paid in the current budget year for these two items. All right. Very good. A motion to approve resolution number 220228-C, purchasing a Monroe MCV slide in V box material spreader and one Monroe MPFA 39 one way fixed angle full trip snow plow for $31,203 through the state of Michigan, my deal program. Lauren Scudder, broadcasting <laughs> voice, go on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I felt like I was on auto traders or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, motion by Stanton, second by Gardner. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? <laughs> if not, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Second. Yes. Yes. Gardner. Yes. Leo. Yes. Lewis. Yes. Sam. Yes. Yes. All right, very good. Peter, well, we've got you here. Uh, Russ had a couple of questions about uh, regarding the budget that we approved. Yeah. yeah, I sent you an email earlier today with some questions. Did you get it? No. How did you send it? Shortly after lunch. All right. I'll just anyway, see. we'll uh, I'll catch up. Follow up. Okay. All catch right. Up. Thanks. Peter. Very good. Thanks so much, Peter. Thanks, Thanks for Peter. sticking around. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. All right. With that, we're on to public comment on any item at all. And I know we have a couple people in the audience. I know you didn't just come for the fun and joy of sitting here watching us. So <laughs> right there. All right. <laughs> all right. This, please, if you would like, address the council. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Please introduce yourself. Did you seriously just come to watch? Oh, okay, fun. Oh, that's fun. Right. But, that's you know, fun. I got the show on 92.7. We, <laughs> sure, we wanted to make sure the parade was going on. Okay, so, good. Good. okay, got it. All right, very good. Anybody else? Public comment on anything? Anybody online, Jamie? No? All right, very good. Uh, I didn't see any communication. So boards... Commission committee reports. Anybody, any reports to add at this time? Yes. Uh, Cal Lake report. Mm -hmm. uh, we had our annual uh, budget, since our last meeting, our budget workshop, followed by a budget uh, 
public hearing and approval of our next fiscal year budget. Uh, as a reminder, Cal Lake's fiscal year runs March 1 uh, to February 28 or 29, mm -hmm. depending on how February leap year falls. Uh, the budget was set as a estimated revenues of uh, $2,470,000 with uh, estimated budget expenses of $2,587,000. Uh, 117 dollar uh, budget deficit that will probably be offset by uh, anticipated expenditures on goods and services that just won't be delivered because of supply line, uh, supply chain issues um, our rate structure at first we were contemplating rates but after we dug back into the budget a little bit discussion between a manager and the board we pretty much have a flat rate schedule there, there uh, there's a slight increase on the water side, a slight decrease on the <clears throat> sewer side. Uh, an average person uses in a, in a household uses about 6,000 gallons of water a month, and that's what drives the cost. If you took a different a look at a $6,000 uh, use usage, your your bill would go up about 27 cents a month. So it's pretty much flat from a budget standpoint. Uh, some of the interesting things that were shared with us, and I might have shared this at the last meeting, but uh, Cal Lake pumped, uh, treated, and distributed over 246 million gallons of water fiscal year in, in the calendar year 2021. And this one just boggles, boggles my mind. But, uh, we anticipated electric bills at a quarter of a million dollars for 2022. Uh, Cost a little bit to pump all that all that water and treat it. Uh, I don't know if there's any questions on the budget, but uh, we're in very strong financial shape, and um, another reason why we could uh, go through another year without, you know, anticipated uh, increases on the on the rate side. Uh, we also have some uh, budget carryover on equipment that was ordered. Uh, close to three hundred thousand dollars worth of generators. They still haven't been delivered yet. Uh, wow. We got okay. word that they're hopefully going to be here in the next sixty to ninety days. Okay. Uh, outside of the budget, about the only critical piece of information that was shared with us was we received the uh, annual sewer capacity report. What that is is uh, we have. Mag meters installed in various spots in the wastewater system, and that generates the amount of sewer that runs into the to the plant that gets treated. Uh, why that's critical is that each community owns a percentage of the capacity treatment capacity of the plant, and so this will allow us to, with the the technology available today, within 3% determine what each community is utilizing in sewer treatment capacity. This is a valuable uh, tool for uh, planning, especially in areas like Douglas and the township, which have vast amounts of areas to, to expend. And so it's good to know what how much capacity you have regarding uh, development. We didn't get too heavy into it, but at our next meeting, uh, we're going to have a presentation by Felice and Vandenberg and give us more specific details on exactly what, who used what uh, in the, uh, I think it's a July to July. So it, it does lag back by about six months. That might be calendar year now. Well, I'll find out next meeting. So anyway, that's yeah. about it. Thanks for thanks yeah. for sharing those minutes too, because I think you sent those our way, what was it, earlier last week, yeah. I believe. Yeah, so. I, I think it's a good idea to see Great. what really goes on out there because it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. much appreciated. Yeah. All right, other boards and commissions? I have first, a quick question for Mr. Beckin. Yeah. Uh, Mark, question for you is, uh, Cal Lake, I know a lot of communities are testing for COVID coming out of the sewage treatment. Is, is Cal Lake doing that? If, if anybody's familiar with that, a lot of communities are beginning right. to test for that to get You're a sense of the load, the infection load in the community. Do you know? There is, 
Yes, but I, you know, he did mention that there, that's something regarding the, it's part of the wastewater. It's not so much to see part of the determination of COVID in the community as much as what's being released out into the, the stream, the, I, the, the I, treatment stream. But I, I can help with that. I, I don't believe we are doing it in this community. There's a network set up statewide. Quite often it's been done in partnership with, um, with academic institutions. Um, it's a really good predictor of outbreaks in congregate care type facilities, uh, college dormitories, prisons, things of that nature, where you can trace it right back to the to the specific, building yeah, to, to, to predict um, an outbreak break of, for example, asymptomatic individuals. Um, the state has gotten more funding to do that, and, and there's an ongoing effort um, being um, kind of headed up by my day job, Eagle, and Department of Health in the state. So it's it's the work's going, it's ongoing, and it's been proving to be very effective. So thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, Mark? just Historic District Commission meets this Thursday, mm -hmm. and the only thing on the agenda is the Wicks Park Bar and Grill expansion. Uh huh. So Historic District will take a look at that. All right. Very good. Other boards and commissions. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. Harbor Authority didn't meet. All right, very good. With that, we'll move on to council comments. I'll start with Lauren. Nothing at this time. Russ? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, a few things. One is uh, last Wednesday, the council at the workshop, it's not on the agenda this evening, um, met with Verizon to discuss potential location for their, I think it's their third small cell, right? Third yes. or fourth small cell. Yeah. Third small cell, the location that was chosen wasn't really received very warmly. So Frank Morrow from Morrow's Restaurant was here and there was some discussion regarding um, two utility poles, which are over on Water Street. And um, I think his friend, uh, Lowe, as I think is his last name, was a consultant with Verizon, had mentioned that he had looked at those two locations because he didn't think that a tree removal was in the cards. And Frank was very generous and said, be happy to remove the tree to help the city meet a strategic objective, <laughs> um, which is great. Which is um, nice. After more thought about it, um, I called Cindy Osmond and I, and I asked her if, if when Mr. Lowe comes to meet with Frank, is that if they'd also look at other locations within that quad for that, that wedge that Scott mentioned, which makes a lot of sense to me. And uh, I asked her, is there any reason why that small cell unit could not be placed on City Hall? And there is nothing that would prevent it from being placed on City Hall. So we don't know if that's appropriate, if that it would even work. But I said, when Mr. Lowe's here, if he could take a look at that to see if that's a possibility. Uh, that would put the city in a position, if it's possible, of you know meeting the needs of the citizens who have been asking for this, and also would save a tree, potentially. And that's and Cindy did mention when I talked with her is that the owners of those poles could very well say no. They could say, can't use our poles. So I thought that was a reasonable recommendation to make, and so we'll see where that all goes. So I just wanted to make sure council was aware of that. Uh, two is um, I know that we're coming up on the. Um, summer season and everybody's scrambling for employees. And I've noticed that a number of local communities, South Haven, the most recent one, have, have been holding job fairs. Um, and I know Ryan's not back from vacation quite yet, but I'd be curious to see if the city might look at some opportunities to, you know, kind of build some interest in the positions. I know it's very difficult to hire people. Uh, just a thought in terms of maybe an approach that we could take. Um, and lastly, as I know, we all submitted our information regarding the city manager's performance evaluation. I just mm -hmm. wonder if there's a timeline and when we expect that process to continue and kind of what the next steps are. Mm -hmm. Bill, you know. I'm asking. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, the manager will have to request a closed session for his performance review. And I spoke with him today and he's going to be doing that. Okay, so, so what's, our, what's our timeline, Mayor? It uh, depends on him, probably within the next few weeks. So stay tuned, I'll let you know. All right, any other council comments? Nothing tonight, Mayor. Oh, nothing to add, thank you. Anything else? All set, thank you. Ken? Nope, thanks. All right, very good. Uh, basically, uh, I really appreciate seeing everybody in the audience today. It's always good to see our candidates and our county commissioner who took off, um, <laughs> rightfully so. Uh, thanks so much. Um, just on a global perspective, I, I think you'll probably all join me in uh, perhaps a slight pay, uh, prayer for peace in our world, since uh, we tend to be on the brink of just a little bit of insanity. So I hope uh, calmer heads will prevail. All right, with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Second. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. All right. Very good. Thank you.